God bless you. My name is Azola, and you are listening to Pastor Kwame. We thank God it's Friday. We thank God for his faithfulness. We thank God for taking us through the week. We thank him for all that happened. We are grateful. We thank him for health. We thank him for what he is able to do. We thank him for what he has done and what he is going to do. We are grateful. And I want to also thank God for your life. I want to always declare a blessing over your weekend. May your weekend be blessed. May God favor you. May God strengthen you. May God lift you up. May God sustain you. If you are listening to me and you are not feeling well, may God heal you right now in the mind the name of jesus if you are listening to me and you are sad may god comfort you right now if you are listening to me and you are tired may god give you strength if you are listening to me and there is something good happening to your life may god make it permanent in the mighty name of jesus i'm grateful to god for this time with you and it's a delight to share the word of god with you the bible sets the flower face the leaves with but the word abide forever can i tell you something um, I'm sure that you are a person of faith and you have a picture about who God is and how awesome he is and how great he is. But I'm going to give you a trick, okay? Not a lot of people stand out in the Bible like the King David. King David stands out as a unique person. He has a title called the man after my own heart. The other person that comes closer to this title is the book is the guy called John in the New Testament, where Jesus called the disciple that I love. So John and David are kind of special to God. And one of the things that makes David special is that David, apart from understanding that God is supreme, David always thought about God as a, a person like you and I. Not not to degrade his deity, but David won God's heart because David could be sitting down and then think about what is God doing right now as I'm here? What can I do to make God kind of laugh? David was relating to God as if he's relating to one another. And he will begin to think about God. You know, all of us, when we think about God, we are thinking about how we want to worship him. But we never think about God as to what can I do for God? David had that kind of thinking pattern where he would sit down and kind of be thinking about god what can i do to make god feel good like he'll be doing that you know what i'm saying and he did that one day and says actually i'm going to build god a church or something and so and that, that whole church thing has never happened to anybody it has never been in the mind of anybody before david just thought about it because he was thinking about god just like you think about people you love so i want you to have that kind of um trick in your life you will really go to the soft spot of god was once a while sit down and just think about what you can do for god what you can do for god whether you can just go to the church and just go and praise him something like something unique where you thought about it it wasn't a pastor that told you to do it like as you sit down think about because god is a person like the next person that's done he's a supreme being but he's also a person he likes to be praised he likes to be thanked he likes every good thing that you do to your boyfriend your husband or your wife god likes those things so i just want to throw in there for you today that once a while sit down and think about what nice thing you can do for god you know and it really makes god happy that's just by the way let me get back to my assignment praise be to god i want to um i want to share with you on this friday from the book of malachi chapter 3 i just wrote i, I just wrote a quick song about this verse and I felt God spoke to me to share this with you. Um, Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. The Bible says, I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why the descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. The King James says, I'm the Lord. I change it. That is why the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, I want to share with you about the grace of God. The grace of God. Um, the grace of God is a very huge message it's a very big message the grace of god is very big and it has many facets and has many the grace of god is really huge and if you look at the grace of god it is the embodiment of jesus christ himself 
So grace is a very major subject, but I want to share with you an, only an aspect of it today. Now, in the book of Malachi, which is also the last book of the Bible, it comes to a conclusion of the old covenant. Malachi is a very interesting book because it's more like a summary of the Old Testament. It's more like how everything came to a conclusion. So whilst the Old Testament was closing up, even though Malachi may not necessarily be the last kind of uh, event that closed the, the Bible, in, in the order that it was put, is very interesting. In the book of Malachi, the author or the prophet concluded that since God started relating to Abraham all the way to Malachi, the people of Israel had constantly disobeyed God. There are about 613 laws in the Bible. By the time Malachi is closing up, it was clear that the people of Israel had disobeyed basically all of them. So God made a conclusion. And that is the conclusion I want to share with you. He says, I am the Lord. As this book is coming to an end, let me tell you how things are. It is only because I do not change. That is why these 12 tribes of Israel are still around. That means that there were countless times and days where if it wasn't for the fact that God doesn't change, Israel would have been wiped out. Hallelujah. And so, the conclusion of the matter is that grace means that God will never break up with you. That is point number one. Grace means that God will never break up with you. I, I'm telling you, it is very difficult to be with somebody you can't be with. I, sometimes I don't really... Um, I pray for people who have gone through divorce. Because sometimes even God had to divorce Israel and come and marry them again. Because it is very difficult to deal with people. So God says that the only reason this 12 tribe is still around is because when I say I love you, I don't change my mind. That's why you are still here. Grace means that God will never break up with you. I'm not here to tell you that do whatever you want, God still love you. That is false teaching. What I'm saying is that no matter how far you go, no matter how far you go, how messed up you think you are, the only thing that will separate you from God is your inability to forgive yourself. So here is what the Bible is saying. God will never break up with you because he doesn't change. Hallelujah. God will never break up with you. He doesn't change. And so I want you to take this message and always find yourself back to God. It does it, it, let me tell you this. Uh, can I be frank with you? There are some problems we are dealing with that I don't know when you will overcome. But regardless of what it is, make sure you find yourself where God is. This same David I was talking about, he was a messed up guy also. He had a lot of sexual problems. But with all his sexual problems, he always understood that God's grace means that God will never break up with you. Go, David will do bad things and he will still cry to God. So I want you to know that God will never break up with you. Do you understand? The reason why Jesus is coming, is taking so long is because God is not a person who likes to take people to hell. If it wasn't that God doesn't change his mind, he would have changed this hell thing. But because he has said it, hell has to come. But the reason why he's taking so long is because he's a God who doesn't want to put people to hell. Hallelujah. So, the grace of God means that for those God is in covenant with, he will never break up with you. And therefore, the ramification is that you have to 
know that and always come to God, no matter how bad things are. Come to God. The second thing that comes out of this lesson is the fact that the grace of God also teaches you that there is nothing that should eat you up. There is nothing that should eat you up. No matter some of you, you feel condemned about the things you have done in your past. Very much condemned. Very much condemned. Abortion. Things you have done. That even people have died because of what you have done and all of that. Sometimes it haunts you. But I came to let you understand that in this relationship between you and God, God Oh my. Do you, let me can I explain what I mean by I I don't change. When God says I don't change, it means that he chooses a position and stays there whether rain or shine. Are you hearing me? So that no matter what you bring to the table, God will still be God and he will still be good. So I want you to understand that and embrace the fact that God will forgive me. God will love me. God will strengthen me. God is not a man. Let me say certain things with you. God is not a man that he will get tired of you. God is not a man that he will just throw you away. God is not a man that he will reject you. God has enough love to die for you. God has enough love to kill himself for you. God has enough love to kill his own son for you. Understand that God loves you. And, and you say, Pastor, if God loves us, why are all these trouble? Why are all these problems? Why are all these things? Because the love of God must be appropriated. The love of God must be received. The love of God must be utilized. And so as I'm speaking, I want you to open you up and receive the love of God so you can be healed of your past pain receive the love of god so you can be healed of all the things that the guilt that is eating you up receive the love of god so you can be healed from all the pain receive the love of god because the grace of god opens you up to a place where no matter what you have done you are forgiven so so the prodigal son is coming home and the only thing the prodigal son needs to do is to come home so the reason why God is loving, but people don't get it, is because people are not coming home. Even though God is love, he is home. So if you don't come home, you will experience his love. So the prodigal son was very smart. He says, I got to go home. You understand? If America wants to see God's love, America has to come home. If you want to see God's love, you have to come home. But I came to speak to you on this Friday that God will never break up with you. Number two. God will never reject you if you say, God, I come just as I am. It does, the Bible says when Jesus died, there was a guy who was just notorious and was just bad. And all he said was that, remember me. And Jesus said that right now you are remembered. Let me tell you this. God is not afraid of your sins. God is not God is not a man. One of the things that I learned as a pastor <laughs> growing up as a, as a young man, I didn't get, like I, t I said before, I went through um, the church t very early. So I didn't get to experience things in the world. So when I became a pastor and people started telling me their, 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 their problems, I, I was very judgmental at the early stage of my pastoring work because I couldn't relate to the kind of big, big things they were talking about, you know. But I grew up and I've done my portion of it and now I know that God is not moved. That is why he was a friend of sinners. That is why he loves those who uh, the Pharisees didn't love. Jesus cast out demons from women. Jesus was in eating with sinners because he he's not allergic to your sins. He is able to clean you from your sins. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So I want to encourage you on today to understand that God is not going to change his mind about you. If you choose to change your mind about God, God will not change his mind about you. So here is how the Bible 
of the Old Testament ended. It says, Israel, listen, come to me, I'm here. But the only reason you are still alive after breaking all the 613 commandments and laws is because when I said to your father Abraham, I will take care of you and bless you, I just said it. When I told Jesus that nothing can separate you from my love, I meant it. So I want you to know that you are not alone in this life. You are not rejected. You are not low class person. You are not just a nobody. You are a child of the Most High God and you are precious to God. Amen. So remember that and love God with all your heart and know that God will never break up with you. And no matter what you have done, if you turn back to God, he will love you. If you turn back to God, he will accept you. There is an oh my, that oh my. So if you want to know why I'm teaching this, there's only one reason. is for you to feel too bad to come home. That's the only reason. And maybe not now. Maybe life will knock you to a place where one day you will feel, because I know people who don't want to go to God anymore because they are ready to go to hell. My father was, shared this joke with me. He says, there was a madman in their village and the madman was said, all he is saying is that when I get to God, he said, I will first look at God and say, God, show me the fire and let me go inside. So he is permanently condemning himself already. So what I want you to understand is this. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what life will throw you. If you can just pick up yourself together and walk back to God, God will accept you. Church people may not accept you. Church people are very judgmental. But don't worry. Walk to God and God will accept you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are unchangeable God. We can always come to you. I pray that we will love you as long as we live. And we will obey your word. In Jesus' name, amen.